G'day guys, it's Fraser here from the Greg Chapel Cricket Centre going to give you almost a complete rundown of knocking in today, what it is, why we do it, how to do it, so hopefully it explains everything you need to know. Now it is going to be a bit of an overview, this will vary from cricket bat to cricket bat depending on which one you go for, so it's always best to check with our staff just so we can give you the right information specific to your cricket bat. Firstly, what is knocking in? Well, knocking in is a process, a preparation process for your cricket bat. Basically, the reason we do it is to strengthen up the timber to make sure it doesn't break. Especially on your higher end cricket bats, we can almost guarantee if you grab one off the shelf and go and use it straight away without any prep work, it will break and it won't be covered by any sort of warranty because the knocking in hasn't been completed at all or correctly. So, very, very important. The last thing you want to do is buy a new cricket bat break it and then have to buy another one. So it's an extremely important process um, and it will also make your bat hit better. So what I've got here in front of me is a few different items that we need to complete the entire process. On my left here, we've got the choice of two different mallets. Now, we usually recommend the timber mallet because it does get the job done a little bit quicker. If you've got the ball mallet, certainly still okay. You just gotta make sure you're hitting it on the flat part of the ball there, not the seam, but the seam does come in handy. You can use it to test out your bat when you think you've finished the knocking in. If it is leaving a dent or a seam mark there, it just means it's not quite ready. We've got fiberglass tape, which isn't essential on a brand new bat, but if you want extra protection, it is great. Extra tech, which we always recommend. Now this is like a self-adhesive clear cover that you can stick on your bat. It always wraps around, covers the face of your bat and wraps around the edges. There's quite a fair few cricket bats out there now that already have this on. Um, it is really, really good stuff. We've seen a massive drop in uh, damage to cricket bats since a lot of the manufacturers have been placing this on. So it is really good stuff, it does work. We always recommend putting extra tech on rather than leaving your bat oil or leaving it natural, of course. Leads me to the next one, which is cricket bat oil. Cricket bat oil is really important to make sure that we put enough moisture levels in the bat to make sure it doesn't crack and dry out. You do have to be very careful with your oiling to make sure you're not putting too much in and to make sure you're putting the oil in in the first place. The last very, very important part that I've got here is togu. Um, you can also use shugu, which is basically the same stuff, or a toga. So that is something that sits on the bottom of your bat. It's vital for ensuring that your warranty isn't voided. If you don't have anything down there, the damage will happen to your cricket bat. It can easily break, so you need to make sure that you get some sort of protection on the bottom of your bat. Now, we've got two bats here. I've got one here, which is what we refer to as like a pre-prepared or ready play style cricket bat. Now, this needs a lot less work than a natural cricket bat like this, but the process in terms of the knocking in with the mallet will still be the same. The good news about these pre-prepared style is that it's already got a film on it, it's, they tend to have a toe, and sometimes they've even got a painted back, which means less maintenance ongoing. A natural bat like the one that I've got here, which we're going to use as the demo today, will need a complete preparation process along with the extra tech, oil, toe guard, etc. you name it. So hopefully that clears a couple of things up with what you may need and what the process does. Let's get stuck into how to do it. So with your process, what we're doing is we're gradually starting off nice and slowly. Now when we're doing this, We've got four areas that we need to focus on in a cricket bat. We've got the face, which is from your, basically your stick up down to about 10 centimetres off your toe and everything in between. Your toe, which is usually your bottom 10 centimetres of your face and each edge. So your toe and your edges are your most vulnerable bits. They're the parts that you need to be spending the time on making sure that they're very well prepped. If they're not, they will break. So you need to make sure that you you get stuck in and you do the preparation really, really well for those areas. So with your edges, make sure you're knocking in, always glancing across, simulating how a ball is going to come off in a game. So you never ever want to hit straight in to your edge or like that. It's always that glancing sort of motion. So that's going to start to round off those edges. You might be able to see, it might be a little bit hard to see on video there, but just where I've hit that there, it's slowly starting to round off. That's the effect that you want 
when you're going through this process. Now, it isn't uncommon on your, especially your high end bats, to get a couple of little surface cracks on there. If you're worried about it, let us know, we can check it out, but usually it's nothing to be concerned on with the softer willows. So it's the same on the other edge, always planting across. Make sure we're starting off really, really gently. After about five to 10 minutes, we can slowly increase the force, so we go from that gentle slow hit to just a little bit harder. Now, two things we want to avoid when doing the knocking in process. One is just keeping that force the entire time, because that's not going to compress the willow enough um, or compress it as far as it needs to go. So that means as soon as a hard ball hits it, it could still break, regardless of how much um, time and effort you put into it. The second thing we want to avoid is going from that really gentle force to really hitting it, because that's how they break in games. So you've really got to make sure that you're starting off soft and you're gradually building up as you go. So that's how you do your edges, always that glancing style motion. At your toe, I tend to pick a grain and start on the far left. And then go up and down. Do that a couple of times and move on to your next grain. So that's just a zigzag style motion to make sure that you're not missing any areas of that toe. You don't have to do it that way, but as long as you've got some sort of sequence in place that you're not going to miss any parts, that's all good. What you don't want to do is miss the bottom centimeter or two of the toe, and especially out there near your edges. They are the most vulnerable bits, so you really got to focus on them. Again, with your toe, like we did the edges, start off nice and soft, and then gradually build up as you go. By the end of it, you should be hitting it quite hard. Your face is exactly the same. Again, I tend to pick the grain on the far left. And just slowly and gently go up and down. Once we've done that same grain a couple of times, we move on to the next one. Once you've finished them all, you go back to the start, you start again, but you're increasing that force as you go. So that's basically your knocking in process. Now, we always recommend putting your extra tech on afterwards if you don't have it on already. That's just because if you put it on first, it can bubble and pop. It's no big deal. You can always put another sheet on, but if you've got the sheet, always best to do it after. With your oil, it's up to you how you want to do it. There's a bunch of different ways that you can oil your bat. There's no right ways. There are a couple of wrong ways, though, that you want to sort of avoid. Um, you don't want to oil it straight away and then knock it immediately. Um, and you just got to keep your oiling in mind with your extra tech as well. If you are going to put a bit of oil in your bat, this stuff won't stick for about two weeks after. So just remember that when it comes time to preparing your bat. So ideally, the preparation would be probably one light coat of oil. Just tip it upside down on a cloth, wipe it in. You let your bat sit there overnight, and then the next night you do the same. Once you've got that soaked in, you can then continue knocking in and then you can put your extra tech on at a later date. Basically, the last thing you do is your togu or shugu or your toe guard. Usually we recommend this stuff because it is 10 times easier to put on and it does give you better protection. We have got a video on how to apply this stuff separately so you can check that out if need be. Now, once you think you've finished with your knocking in process, it's then time to go to phase two of knocking in, which is basically the net session. So at the nets, you don't want to get out there with a fast bowler straight away and really start trying to cream it. You want to start off really gently, someone at the other end just giving you a couple of underarm balls and just defensive shots. Check your bat out after every shot that you play. If you see any slight indentations or any dints, it does mean that your bat isn't quite ready. So whatever you do, don't keep using your bat. You've got to pull it away, go back home, and go back to your knocking in because it means it's not ready and does need more work. So if you are seeing those marks, Make sure you're spending another half an hour to an hour in those areas that they're occurring. Eventually, what you want to get through is an entire net session without any dents or seam marks. Obviously, you just, similar to your knocking in, you start off soft and you gradually get harder and harder, hitting it harder, faster bowlers. Like I said, if you do see a mark and it's not ready, but if you can get through the whole session with no dents or no seam marks, it's usually an indication that your bat is ready to go for a match and you're good to go. So just be very careful when you're knocking in. There's no such thing as too much knocking. Um, it will benefit your bat in terms of longevity and performance, so take your time with it. Like I said, if you don't want to do it yourself, we have got a couple of services in store. Depending on what bat you have, we may be able to help you out with the knocking in here. So uh, hopefully that clarifies a couple of little bits and pieces. 
We do have a warranty video with bats as well. You've got to make sure that your, your bat's knocked in, you know, you look after it generally, keep it out of the way. There's a few checkpoints that you need to check off just to make sure that your, your bat has still got a warranty. But can't stress enough how important knocking in is and extra tech, oiling, shugu, you name it, it's all extremely important to the preparation of a cricket bat.